What's up everybody? Thank you so much for checking out this course Python on the back and my name is Hussein. Uh, I've been in the software engineering business for over 15 years building applications all over the world actually. Yeah, I've been in the Middle East, I've been in, in other countries as well. Uh, so I'm currently in the United States of America, build, uh, working with a company, building a lot of applications. On, I have I have used so many languages. I've built a lot of applications, and I want today to share my experience with you guys about Python and how far can you push this language. All right. So I want to use this video to uh, introduce myself first and. Uh, uh, also, uh, talk to you about the importance of backend development. So, why, why, what is the difference between backend development? What have we been doing all these years, right? What have we been doing? Okay. So, we've been building applications. We know how to build applications. We know how to write scripts, Python or JavaScript or C sharp or C plus plus. PHP, but we back like 20 years ago, even 30 years ago, there was no notion of back end or front end, if you think about it, right? Everything was in one box. You build an application, you send someone a binary, and they run the application. And I still remember in the 90s, we download EXEs and we expect these EXEs, right, to run on this machine. Right, even if I put it in a flash drive or put it somewhere else, it will just run. Image it doesn't doesn't require anything else. Uh, doesn't require to connect to the internet or do anything. Right, it is a, f a fully functional, self-contained application. But obviously, the world changes. Right, you we evolve. We we tried. We started to we started to do more and more cool things. And the reason we do, we do this not just for the cool of it, right? It's just for a reason. Okay, there are things. If you build an application, you need to store data. You need that's the basic things you need to. You need to store information about the user. You need to write records, and thus came the database, right? And the database, obviously, it only work when a lot of people connect to it and start. Uh, storing things in it, right? You cannot put a database, well you can in the recent days using blockchain, but that's another topic, right? But you cannot, the centralized uh, method of putting the database in one place and people read, other clients start reading from this server and pulling information of it. That's the client server architecture came into place and then by doing that, we started to do things on the server and we started to do things on the client and we thought okay now that the client is no longer doing all this heavy lifting we can start pushing some of these heavier load on the back end on the server okay that's why that's that's where we started we do a back end right the, back, the first back end was server and then we invented the three-tier architecture where with the database, an application server, where we put all this heavy logic that takes a lot of CPU consume, right? It consumes a lot of CPU and RAM. We put it in the server, and the client becomes really thin. And that's why we started selling more and more of these cheap laptops where you can just open a browser and execute an application, right? Thus, the invention of back-end and front-end development. It's like, okay, this is all in a nutshell. Right. I'm sorry if it's like it, it didn't it didn't came across, but uh, that's an idea of backend development. So why do we need to do Python on the back end? The same reason you build this cool Python library. Okay, imagine that you build this amazing Python library. Right, it's written in Python. Obviously, it has all these requirements. Oh. You have to use this version of uh, this package, or you have to use this version of Python. And it has to run, by the way, it runs really weird when it's on Linux, but it, wor it runs really fine when it's Windows 10. And you have to think, you have to, if, if you're sharing this library with someone, they you have to tell them to do all of that stuff. Hey guys, eh, by the way, you have to install this version, and this version, and this version, just to execute your logic, right? Imagine this world now, and we are in this world where we, you write, you take your Python application, okay, and you put it in the back end. What you expose is APIs. You expose endpoints. 
okay, through the HTTP, beautiful HTTP protocol, where we, every single programming language understand, understand Git, Post, and Options, and all these cool things, Header, and it is like a very well-defined HTTP uh, protocol, the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It's really very standard, and everybody understand it, all browsers understand it, and then if you take your language and you teach it how to respond in, in the HTTP format, then guess what? All your applications just magically work, right? All the clients, the JavaScript can start using your library by exposing these endpoints. And we're gonna show this in this course, how you do that, okay? I'm gonna show you how to build all this stuff. We're gonna talk about it in the outline though. But yeah, this is all this cool stuff, guys. We're gonna build a lot of cool stuff. Uh, I hope you enjoy this course. Thank you so much for checking it out. I'm gonna see you there. Thank you.